Hi, it's Logan from sleepopolis.com, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Lisa mattress. Now, Lisa recently updated the material used in the comfort layer of the mattress, so we're going to do an updated review of it. Right off the bat, I can tell you it is a bouncy mattress, and it recently made my list for best latex mattresses as a best latex alternative. You can find that list by Googling sleepopolis and best latex mattress. It's going to pop right up. I'm going to put the mattress through a few tests today and give some general recommendations at the end of the review. But if you are interested in a personal recommendation or there's some information that I don't cover throughout the course of the review, please do not hesitate to leave a note in the comment section below with some information about yourself and some of your sleep preferences. Now, Lisa was one of the first bed -a box companies that started shipping direct to consumer in 2014. They also offer a hybrid version, but today we're just going to take a look at their updated all foam version. Now that's most often compared to the flagship versions of the Casper and Purple mattresses. Now they all come in at about the same price point. The three of the biggest names in the bed -a box market. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the uh, competition between all three of them later on in the review. But for right now, we're just going to start talking only about the all foam Lisa mattress and we're going to begin with the uh, materials used in the construction of it. The Lisa is an all foam mattress consisting of three different layers. Now the cover of the Lisa mattress is a polyester blend. It's pretty breathable and I think it has kind of a thicker, cozier feeling to it. Now below the cover we have the comfort layer on top, uh, which is used to be two inches of a vena foam. This is the actual updated portion of the Lisa mattress. They now use this uh, foam called uh, LSA 200. It's still really bouncy. It's still a latex alternative foam to it. It's got kind of a medium firmness to it. You can see it has that quick response to pressure you might expect out of a latex. It does a good job of uh, kind of cooling, dissipating body heat. It's not quite as dense as you might expect a latex to be, so that's kind of uh, the difference here between a full-on latex feel and kind of this latex alternative. Uh, below that, we have a two-inch layer of memory foam. You can see that much slower response to pressure out of that layer than the uh, latex alternative foam above it. Uh, now the reason they put the memory foam in here is because they wanted more pressure relief, so it gives you a little bit further in uh, to sink into for some of that pressure relief, some of that contouring you might want out of a memory foam mattress. But by putting it underneath the latex alternative, it does two things, uh, and that's kind of keep you from feeling trapped in the mattress or stuck in the mattress. With that bounce on top, uh, you're going to be able to move around a lot easier. You're going to feel more on top of the mattress than in it. And also, uh, memory foam does have a reputation as trapping a bit of body heat sometimes, so by putting it below the latex alternative, uh, it kind of defends against that uh, body heat trap, helps you sleep a little bit cooler. Now below both those layers, we have this six inch layer of high density polyfoam. It's the support layer of the mattress. Uh, it's really just kind of a firmer feel to it, really quick response to pressure. Uh, it really acts as the base of the mattress and gives the Lisa its shape. Now that we've seen what makes up the Lisa mattress, it's time to get an idea for the feel and firmness of it. So I started out by lying on my back. Now, with my weight evenly distributed, lying on my back, I did sink into the mattress just a little bit. You would feel that LSA 200 foam kind of fill in the space to me up my lower back, which is nice. Um, even though it was sinking in a bit, it's that quick response to pressure as a latex alternative foam. Uh, so as I kind of rolled around and changed positions, I definitely felt more on top of the mattress than in it. I, was, I didn't feel any stuck feeling uh, when changing positions. As I rolled onto my side, uh, you know, I wanted to be very aware of any pressure points that might form at my shoulders and my hips. You know, side sleepers often have a lot of issues with pressure points because that higher weight concentration, you end up pushing further into a mattress. And in general, you're interacting with firmer uh, layers of the mattress than you would if you're just a back or stomach sleeper. Uh, because of that, a lot of side sleepers prefer softer mattresses. You know, in my opinion, the Lisa comes in at about a seven out of 10 on the firmness scale. Uh, and it, in my, you know, medium is generally about six, six and a half out of 10. Uh, so just a hair to the firmer side, in my opinion, but not much. Uh, I did feel a little bit of pressure forming at my shoulders on the mattress, uh, but nothing too crazy. We are going to take a closer look at pressure later on in the review, uh, but that's just my initial feeling as a side sleeper on the Lisa. Now, as I rolled onto my stomach, stomach sleepers are kind of the opposite of side sleepers. You tend to prefer a firmer mattress. Uh, the hips can be a heavier portion of the body, so if they're going to sink into a softer mattress, they're going to throw your back out of alignment. You might wake up with some aches and pains. Uh, now, in my opinion, the Lisa did a pretty good job of keeping my hips from sinking in when I was on my stomach. If you are a really strict stomach sleeper that prefers to sleep on like a wooden board or something like that, uh, maybe the Lisa is not for you, but if you are kind of a back and, co back and stomach combo sleeper, uh, something like that, I think the Lisa could be a good choice, has, has that nice medium firmness for you, uh, a little bit firmer than medium, but right around that area. Um, now, while I was on the mattress, I also tested out the edge support of the bed. 
Now, egg support can be really important if you sleep with a partner or need to use the entire surface area of the bed. Uh, if you have a mattress with a strong edge support, it means you can sleep to the end of the bed. It's gonna make uh, the bed feel that much bigger. Now, as I was on the edge of the Lisa, uh, it was pretty much on average with what I was expecting out of an all foam bed in a box mattress. Push through the comfort layer and the uh, transition layer of memory foam pretty easily, but that's pretty much to be expected out of those foams. Uh, the high density poly foam base did a good job of kind of holding my uh, holding my weight up on the side of the bed. So I was pretty comfortable laying at the edge of Lisa. So all in all, pretty much on, on what I expected out of a bed in a box mattress for the edge support. Hey, so I mentioned before that we were gonna take a closer look at pressure points uh, later on in the review. So uh, instead of just describing the feel of the Lisa 2, I wanted to give you a visual representation of where those pressure points might form while lying on the mattress. So put a pressure map down on top of it and a lie down on it in a few different positions. And you can see the results next to you ranging from blue for low pressure to red for high pressure. So I started out on my back with my weight evenly distributed. You can see it's pretty much all blue across the board on my body. Uh, that's pretty much to be expected. Uh, you know, on a medium firmness, maybe a shade to the uh, firmer side. That's kind of what I was expecting. As I rolled onto my side, you can see that uh, in the shoulder area, it did kind of go up to kind of that yellow range on the uh, pressure point there. Uh, that's kind of what went in line uh, with what I felt when lying on the Lisa. Again, it is just a hair to the firmer side, uh, so the, a little bit of increased pressure on my side. Uh, rolling onto my stomach, though, you can see that it again uh, kind of goes back down into that uh, blue range across my entire body. Again, in my opinion, uh, the Lisa is pretty good for uh, back and stomach combo sleepers, a little bit firmer than a medium firmness, so it's gonna do a good job keeping your hips up, but also keeping that pressure low if you're just uh, lying on your back. All right, so I mentioned before that Lisa is one of the biggest names in the bed in a box market, and it goes up against uh, companies like Casper and Purple all the time. So I wanted to get into a little bit more of a comparison between all three of these. Now, all three mattresses come uh, at about 10 inches in height, and the pricing is about the same with the queen size versions of all three coming in at just under $1,000. Uh, now, when talking about the Casper, it's similar to the Lisa in that it has a latex alternative comfort layer over a memory foam layer uh, to give kind of that balanced foam feel. The difference is that the Casper has more of a zoned support uh, system, so it's a bit firmer around the hips to keep your hips from sinking in, uh, and there's a bit of a softer foam feel to it uh, near the shoulders to allow for some sinkage there uh, for spine alignment uh, while lying on your side. Uh, when talking about the purple mattress, uh, instead of that latex alternative that the Casper and the Lisa use in the comfort layer, they use this hyperelastic polymer grid. Uh, it's a really bouncy material. Even though the Lisa does have some really good bounce to it, in my opinion, uh, the Purple is just a really bouncy mattress. That hyperelastic polymer is a unique feeling, so it's not for everybody, uh, but it does provide kind of a medium firmness, right in that six and a half out of 10 range. So again, good, pretty good for combo sleepers uh, if you're sleeping in multiple positions. All right, so I just wanted to give you a quick idea of the bounce of the Lisa mattress. So I have this 10 pound seal ball here, and as I'm dropping it, you can see that, you know, in my opinion, there is pretty good bounce to the Lisa mattress. It comes from that latex alternative uh, foam in the comfort layer, that LSA 200 foam. Uh, it's pretty quick response to pressure, so it creates some good bounce. Even though there is that layer of memory foam underneath that, and memory foam tends to dull bounce, uh, because it is below the latex alternative, the mattress still has good bounce to it, so you're gonna be able to change positions. You're not gonna get any of that kind of sunken in and stuck feeling when you're on the Lisa. Now while we're here, also gonna run a quick motion transfer test. Basically, I'm gonna drop that same ball from heights of four, eight, and 12 inches. That's gonna simulate someone kind of getting into and out of bed or rolling around in the middle of the night. Uh, and on the other side of the mattress where someone might be sleeping, I have a seismometer set up, which kind of detects the disturbance transferred across the mattress with each of those drops. So now that we have the results up on screen, uh, you know, you can see that there are some little bit higher spikes uh, than average, than normal, than what I expect uh, on a bend to box uh, mattress. You know, because of that bouncy comfort layer, uh, it is gonna transfer a bit more motion across depending on, you know, you can see on that 12 drop, there is pretty high motion transfer. Uh, that's gonna be expected with latex and latex alternative foams, um, just because it is a bouncier material, it's gonna transfer a bit more disturbance. All right, so a lot of people buying a mattress are gonna know if they're gonna feel like they're sitting on top of or sinking into bed. So to test this, to set up the sinkage test, in which we use four balls of varying sizes, weights, and densities, simulate different body parts, and check to see how far into the mattress they go. 
So on the Lisa here, we have this six pound medicine ball. It's filled with sand, it's made to a lighter body part. It sinks into the mattress about an inch. Here we have the 10 pound steel ball. It's the densest ball used during this test. It sinks into the Lisa just under two inches. Here we have a 50 pound medicine ball filled with sand, it simulates kind of a heavier portion of your body. Think maybe your like shoulders, your hips, it sinks into the mattress about four inches. And over here on the left, uh, we have this 100 pound medicine ball. If you're a bit bigger, it simulates kind of that center mass of your body and it's sinking into the Lisa about five and a half inches. Overall, I would say these are pretty close to average, a little bit uh, less sinkage seen on the 10 pound steel ball and the 100 pound medicine ball over here uh, when compared to other like 10 inch uh, bend a box foam mattresses out there. Uh, so, you know, pretty average sinkage overall, but again, with that quick response to pressure from the comfort layer, you are gonna feel more on top of the mattress than it because you're gonna be able to change positions really easily. You're not gonna feel kind of sunk in or stuck in the Lisa. All right, so just to give you some basic information about the Lisa mattress, there is a 100 night trial period, a 10 year warranty, shipping is free and it will arrive compressed in a box and white glove delivery is available. Now I really like this new Lisa update and some of the reasons I would recommend it to you is if you're looking for a mattress with some bounce to it, that quick response to pressure from the LSA 200 foam that's in the comfort layer uh, really provides some good bounce to the mattress so you can move around pretty easily. I would also recommend this mattress to you uh, if you are looking for something that sleeps a bit cooler. Uh, again, the comfort layer is a latex alternative foam, so it does a good job of dissipating body heat. And even though there is a memory foam layer in the construction, it's placed below that latex alternative, so you shouldn't have to worry about it trapping too much body heat or anything like that. So you should be able to sleep pretty cool throughout the night. And finally, I would recommend the Lisa uh, if you're a back and stomach combo sleeper. You know, again, uh, because of that bounce, you're gonna be able to change positions pretty easily. And also, it is just a hair to the firmer side, in my opinion, kind of that seven out of 10 range on the firmness scale. Uh, so it's gonna do a good job of keeping your hips from sinking in too much, keeping your spine aligned in a good position. Now, some of the complaints I might have about the Lisa update is that I wouldn't say it's great for side sleepers, uh, but we saw that uh, higher pressure on the pressure mat portion of the review. So if you are a strict side sleeper, you might wanna be a little bit more careful on this mattress. And also uh, there was pretty high motion transfer on the mattress in my opinion. Uh, again, it's a bouncy mattress and that's just kind of the nature of the beast uh, with the bouncier materials we see out there like latex alternative materials uh, tend to have a higher motion transfer than let's say a memory foam mattress. Uh, those are some really general recommendations. So if you are looking for a personal recommendation, please feel free to leave a note in the comment section below with some information about yourself and some of your sleep references and be sure to get back to you. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Sleepopolis YouTube channel as we're gonna keep putting out more content. It's gonna help you get a better night's sleep. And please follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we're gonna keep putting out uh, more sleep news, uh, comparisons, reviews, and also uh, announcements for giveaways in the future. So definitely don't miss out on any of that. Uh, so that's it for the review today. I hope it's helpful. Have a nice day.